Welcome back, Poppers. Today, we are going to explore the life of the woman behind one of the most iconic toys ever created, Barbie. Barbie, you're beautiful. You make me feel. Ah, Barbie, a doll as American as apple pie and baseball, but also somewhat controversial in recent years with many accusing men of using it to make women conform to unrealistic measurements and a host of other things. However, a man did not invent the cherished doll and neither did the inventor intend to demean or offend anyone. Meet Ruth Handler, the woman that would change how we play. Ruth Mariana Mosky was born on the 4th of November, 1916, to Jacob and Ida Mosky, who were Polish Jewish immigrants who settled in Denver, Colorado. And even as the youngest of 10 children, her parents provided a very stable life. Uh, not much is actually known about her formative years. However, Ruth did marry her high school sweetheart, Elliot Handler, in 1938. That same year, the young couple moved to Los Angeles, which is actually not surprising because the city is known for hosting some of the biggest dreams. And in time, Elliot began making lucite and plexiglass furniture, which at that time were new forms of plastic. Being quite sharp, Ruth advised her husband to do this commercially. And so their furniture business was born. So while Elliot made the merchandise, Ruth handled sales, even landing a very lucrative Douglas aircraft contract, amongst many others. But eventually, her husband wanted to move on to other products, because as any good entrepreneur knows, innovation is key. So he did what most business types did. He partnered with a good friend. So once Harold Matt Matson came aboard in 1944, they called their garage-based company Mattel, a combination of their names, Matt and Elliot. And just like that, they began producing picture frames. Not exactly what comes to mind when you hear the word Mattel, but we're getting there. Because during this time, Elliot began making dollhouse furniture from the scraps they had lying around. And surprise, surprise, these items actually outpaced the picture frames in sales. So naturally, Mattel stopped selling the latter and focused on dollhouse furniture. They soon even started making a toy ukulele dubbed the Yuka Doodle, amongst others <laughs> of types of toys. <laughs> Sorry. But despite this progress, Matt wanted out. So he sold his shares to the handlers, giving them full control of the company. With Ruth and Elliot as the dynamic duo, Mattel formally became a corporation in 1948. And with the diligence and hard work, they acquired the rights to produce Mickey Mouse Club merchandise in 1955 an agreement that changed the entire landscape of the toy industry. But Mattel's true destiny didn't come until the day Ruth was watching her preteen daughter, Barbara, play with her friends. And as the girls played with paper dolls, she watched them. And from what she could observe, the girls enjoyed bestowing titles and jobs on the dolls. However, she noticed that the accessories and clothing didn't attach properly. And even worse, the girls were very limited in how they could even interact with the paper dolls. But this is when Ruth had her proverbial light bulb moment. A Tesla moment, if you will. Yeah, get out of here, Edison. Everybody knows about you. Anyway, despite now wanting to design a doll, Ruth was a bit worried about selling a very curvaceous one. After all, the idea buzzing in her head was meant for preteen girls. So despite drafting some things, she didn't really have a final muse until her family went on vacation to Switzerland. 
It was there she found the perfect prototype in a West German doll called Bildi Lily, which was actually a gag gift for adults. The German fashion doll launched on the 12th of February 1955 and ceased production in 1964. And the doll itself was actually based on a comic strip named Lily, created by Reinhard Buthien for the Bild which was actually a German tabloid newspaper. With her concept and visual prototype on hand, Ruth designed her version exactly as she wanted, all while keeping the measurements very small to prevent the doll from being considered too sexy for consumers. Upon completion, she named the doll Barbie after her daughter, Barbara. But unlike most inventors, Ruth didn't need to wait for anyone to distribute or even invest in the product. After all, she and her husband owned Mattel. So on the 9th of March, 1959, Barbie was introduced at the American Toy Fair in New York. And the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, actually, it was not an immediate success. In fact, the handlers did not get a single order. So they did what any other inventor would do. They refused to give up. Instead of throwing the towel in, they heavily advertised between Disney's Mickey Mouse Club. And that's when destiny finally kicked in. In 1959, Barbie became so popular that Mattel and its owners became globally renowned. The doll sold 300,000 units at $3 a piece, which is equal to $26.83 today. With sales increasing, Ruth and Elliot added a boyfriend for the doll, which was appropriately named after their son, Ken. And subsequently, they added many other friends and family in the world of Barbie, expanding the brand further. Since inception, 1 billion units have been sold in 150 countries with sales exceeding a billion dollars annually. And with a variety of products we can't even get into in this video, it's no doubt that Barbie will continue to dominate all competitors. Yeah, I'm side-eyeing you Brax dolls, don't worry, your saga is coming. One amazing fact about Ruth is that even after fighting breast cancer, and having a mastectomy, she designed a better breast prosthesis. Along with a friend named Peyton Massey, she founded Ruth Thon Corp, a corporation that manufactured the Nearly Me. In fact, it is said that she personally fitted First Lady Betty Ford for one. This bit of info has nothing to do with Mattel per se. However, it's just another amazing accomplishment for an already amazing life. Sadly, Ruth Handler passed away from colon cancer in 2002 at age 85, and her husband, Elliot, followed nine years later at the age of 94. And despite the sadness, they left behind one of the greatest legacies ever forged by a husband and wife team, something to be enjoyed by multiple generations to come. Obviously, you can still purchase Barbie and the brand anywhere in the world to include Mattel's own official website, Amazon and Target. Well, poppers, join us next week when we delve into the world of Kevin Eastman, the man who gave us the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. See you later.